that we can go into Vream for a bunch of points and Meteor Shower, and we should get a lot of points here. I'm curious to see what his last cards are, but we're going to have a lot of tempo, which is exactly how this deck is supposed to work. Okay, he banished one of the range drill ones. Fine. We'll go Vreemd. And this will be a lot of points from 34 to 48. So 14. Minus one, because he the um, long ships ping us before we get our deploy armor. But he shouldn't have enough points here. There's the harder terror we mentioned him having. He's gonna do three damage. And Meteor Shower, we're just gonna play because. And we should get a bunch of points here. This is just kind of show off how much we actually do here. We didn't actually need that, obviously. But now we're up by 22. GG. So this is our first deck we're making back after being gone for a while, and really I haven't played many games of the new patch, so we're going to kind of see and try and go with something you may have seen already, which is going to be Yennefer, Illusionist, and Triss Meteor Shower. It did craft them, obviously. So Illusionist here, when you spawn, you deploy, spawn Yennefer's Illusion. First time you spawn a unit, battle for each turn, damage lowest power enemy by spawn use base power. So that's pretty good. Uh, plays for 12, and death blow boosts self by 1, so potentially pays, plays for 13. And the reason why we're going to do that in Soldiers, in case you haven't noticed you're playing in for Imperial Formation, the combo's pretty well Triss Meteor Shower, or the Imperial Formation combo's built well with both of these. So here we have Deploy, damage all units on a row by half the base power, or boost all units on a row by half the base power. We're going to be going for the boost most of the time, and trying to make use of some Slave Infantry stuff, and see if we can't make something work with that. It should be pretty fun. So we have the Illusionist, we have Meteor Shower, pretty self-explanatory, running both of them. Now, as far as stuff for Yennefer Illusionist, we could go all in on spawning a bunch of guys and playing a defender. I'm not convinced that'll work, because I'm pretty sure people will answer it, so I don't want to go too far in on that. But we do have some good spawning, because it has synergies with soldiers. We'll get into that. So one of those is being Mushy Truffle. It's going to make Illusionist, what a surprise. How thematic. And yeah, obviously it's in here. All right, we are playing Germaine Picant. You can run versions of this deck. Um, so basically, you can run... A soldier deck without Jermaine and Slave Infantry. It's up to you which one you want to run. This one has... The Jermaine and Slave Infantry have really good potential. And especially in a shorter round. Like a three or four card round. You play Jermaine, two Slave Infantry, and Vrigif. That's that's a lot of points. But So I like that. I think it's fun. But you could also run it without them. So maybe run um, some more consistency cards. Like a Roach or a Knickers. And then change around the position, provisions. Maybe put in a Heat Wave up here. And you could do that as well. It's up to you. I just want to try this version out because usually you know, people don't see Jermaine that much. You want to bring them back. Jermaine, the cows. It's like a feature of the channel at this point. How many times he plays cow cards. Uh, we have Ramon. Obviously, you can spawn and create something, which is really nice. And then we have the Invocation, Removal. Press Butterflies for more consistency. If we boost Illusionist... They pretty much have the tall removal Yennefer Illusionist if we draw with Thrust Butterflies, which is nice. The thing about Soldiers is a lot of your key cards are units. So, for example, Jermaine and Ramon, you can get those as well. Uh, boosting up Jermaine lets him spawn a couple more cows, potentially. They're not going to tall removal Jermaine, but at five provisions, they almost always spend a five version card to kill him off, which is a tad annoying, but you can boost up with Imperial Formation. We'll talk about that in a minute. So we have the Regaf here to trigger exclusively Slave Infantry. So you could run a bit more uh, engine stuff, right? So you could put in the crossbows, more or less. You could put the crossbows in as a card. And the reason we didn't go for that, and the other one is the Darlian Soldiers who spawn the three power guys. Um, they're just not great. I mean, they, they find their turn guys with Yennefer and all, but they're really not great on their own. So I don't like running them. Um, I do like running, though, on the other hand, the Crosswoman and the especially Elba Armor Cavalry. But with the new provisions we needed for Illusionists and such, we kind of cut those. I'll, I'll talk about where you can put them in if you want to in a minute. So we do have their Min Sung after Vrigif. We have a Fawn. You pull them out of your deck with your leader. We have Vreemd. So he's here to boost all the Slave Infantries. Although we are running Megascope, which I'll we'll talk about in a minute. And if you Megascope a couple Nilfgaardian Knights, you can end up using Vreemd on three or four Nilfgaardian Knights, which is still pretty good. Playmakers and Mage Assassins for consistency and tempo. Nilfgaardian Knights is our best Megascope target. It's also just a pretty good card, Soldier. The Slave Infantry are in here to combat with Jermaine. Um, that's pretty much it. You can get a lot of them with Ramon. And then transform a bunch of cows, which is really nice. Um, you can also, just remember also, you can always throw down Slave Infantry round one on a Mage Assassin or something. If you need to start doing a combo there and you want to hold on to Jermaine. You do have a second Slave Infantry. If you just play like one round one. It's not that bad, but you, if you 
basically the idea here is you either we want to play two longer rounds with a bunch of units one of them we just want to want to win round one we just want to win round wow can't talk we want to win round one more or less right away like pretty quickly get a bunch of units out tempo stuff which is why cards like roach and knickers are good additions to the deck but we are i couldn't find space for him really if i wanted to i wanted to run jermaine which is kind of we want to do slave infantry version if you don't have slave infantry version it's much easier to fit them in but i wanted to go with this so they are good additions and we just want to cannot talk today i'm sorry guys apologize for that what we want to do is go for the long round three or two depending on if you're thinking two of them or not and go slave infantry with regif and boost everything that boosts everything with triss because triss rounds up so boost all the slave infantry by three that's the idea here if you go into a long round, you can also use the Slave Infantry stuff early, and if you get a long round with a bunch of Nilfgaard Knights spawned out and just some other cards out, you can still get a good value from the Triss Meteor Shower. So that's the idea here. And you can also use Yennefer Illusionist in a different round to try and win that one as well. There's some very good tools you have for different rounds. I mentioned Slave Infantry, Mage Assassin. Imperial Diplomacy is in here because it combos pretty well with the Yennefer Illusionist. I didn't want to completely exclude synergies for her in case she does stick with that three-point boost because we're going to try and draw her with Butterflies. Or we can boost her with formation, which keeps her alive pretty well as well. So we do the two megascopes as well. That's just in here for North Guardian Knight. Uh, you could run a backup card for the megascopes of the seven per seven point guy, the Ardfen Tortoise. You could run a backup Ardfen Tortoise, but honestly, the four person slots are pretty crowded. And again, this is where you cut slave infantries, put these in, and have two more provisions for something else. You could also cut Dead Man's Tongue for a high provision card as well. It's up to you. I think we'll be fine, though, just with the Nilf Guardian Knights. But you have to be a little more careful with the Mega Scopes. You don't want to hold on to them too much. The Mega Scopes are definitely a card you can Dead Man's Tongue banish if they're not going to be useful, though. So uh, don't mind too much because you want to banish them with Dead Man's Tongue. Don't mind that too much. We have the two Illusionists. So yeah, this is the deck. Uh, I'm curious to see how this goes. Let's go test it out. Uh, before we get too much into the games, though, I do want to mention there's definitely changes you can make. The version without Slave Infantry might be better, hard to say, but let's go test it out and find out for ourselves how it does. Imposter will be our first match here. Patience is not a virtue. I am no Imposter. We'll have to see what this is going to be. We have to watch out that he takes our Yennefer. He's running his own Yennefer deck. We don't really want that to happen because that could be pretty scary. Unless we don't want Mage Assassin. Dead Man's Tongue's pretty good. We could also, we could honestly just open round one, try and win on even with the Yennefer's Illusionist. I don't, I think he'd be able to stop that though, which is kind of an issue. We'll, we'll see what he wants to open with here. We could attempt a pressure with the Yennefer Illusionist. Problem with that is if he has Invocation and takes it, we're kind of doomed if he has his own Yennefer. Just goes into heavy Yennefer based deck. Honestly, we might just try and draw, draw Germain here. Although we are, because we have two slave infantries, we don't have regift though. Makes it uh, awkward. Oh, I, I said we had no backup for um, the regift here. We have illusionists. Okay, so this is what's going on. One of these decks. One of these. Um, we actually have a really nice thing we can do here. Is he's going to try and duchess inform with this a bunch of times. We're just going to transform it and kind of just see his new plan. It should make it a lot harder for him. Obviously, we lose some tempo, or it's not tempo, we lose some potential on our slave infantries later in the game. Totally worth it here, though, because if he's trying to make a bunch of Yennefer Illusionists or something, a bunch of mushy truffles, we can kind of actually stop that. Obviously, we can't stop all of it, but, you know, not letting him Duchess inform with them is pretty good. It is pretty good. Now, we could draw a unit of our choice. None of these seem amazing, other than Germain would be good. It's because we have our slave infantry in our hand. Let's just go with one of these guys. I bring death. Quite literally. Let's try and win round one. Not just his informants are still good for him because he can hit the Blightmaker. There's not much we could do about that. Get the second one in his hand. That is annoying. 
That being said, we could potentially do something of our own with mushy truffles on these guys. We'll have to see. Uh, he's going to start getting a bunch of tempo points. Play Diplomacy. Nice. What we were looking for. Some damage there. Because the thing with Diplomacy against Nilfgaard is you get a lot of locks and damage card options. So it's very worth using it to try and stop that there. Now he's down to two guys. He might Vilgefort's Renegade already. If we can limit what he gets off of it, his deck gets significantly weaker because he commits a lot of provisions to this stuff. We can make it so it doesn't pay off. That's really good. And we also want to win on even if possible. What is truth, if not an so that's weird. I guess he didn't see the cards he wanted. That's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, we could go for a free griff draw later. Wouldn't it be bad. We could also make Imperial Practitioners of our own, but the thing of that with um, Illusionist, the thing is we don't want to do that, because <laughs> uh, we already know he's going for... Well, if we did that, he Duchess informing us. Let's just play one of these guys. Nothing too committal here. We're not going to try and draw into Vrigriff, otherwise this would be a poor choice of placement. Another Imperial Practitioner. Oh, yeah, because this one's the one he had in his hand when he played the uh, Operator. So, the question is, what do we want with Butterflies? I kind of... I'm definitely leading towards the Vream tier. So we do have a second Slave Infantry, and it wouldn't be bad, because we could transform our Mage Assassin. And we also have Ramon into it, so let's go here. This is ranged, right? We have to shuffle a card back, which I'm not a huge fan of, though. We could just Dead Man's Tongue. Let's Dead Man's Tongue. I don't really want these Megascopes, I don't think. Let's get rid of them. We don't really want them this game. We're not going to boost this because we want something to transform. We're going to boost this guy. Let's see what he gives us. I'm really suspecting the Vilgaforce Renegade is going to happen soon. Let's have to see what card it's for. Duchess Informant. That's good for us to transform. I think we do go Ramon here then. Ramon to Slave Infantries. We don't want to give him this as a coup option. And that should give us a lot of tempo points. And we still have the option of going for Triss into the other into Triss Meteor Shower. We'd have to shuffle back a good card, but it could just be Slave Infantry. Like Slave Infantry is play it does play for quite a bit sometimes on these spine cards. But I wouldn't mind trading that for a Meteor Shower. Okay, there's a Renegade. It's Yenna for Illusionist spam. Very unsurprising, you ask me. Let's go for that Meteor Shower then. Put back the slave infantry. Draw meteor shower. We're gonna want to win this on even. The thing is, he does have his imposter still. So, so we don't have elbow armor. If we had elbow armor cavalry, it's gonna be much easier because we just lock these um Yennefers, But okay, he's just gonna pass the round. That's probably smart. The thing is. If we go Illusionist, and he... Yeah, we can start going Illusionists now, I think. I think that's the best plan. Actually, Slave Infantry is pretty good. Is it? This isn't really... Okay, now this is better. It's good tempo. And the cows will block a lot of the spawn damage, although that wouldn't be ideal. I mean, this is, this is objectively a pretty decent hand, so we're going to play it. But, um, what do we want to make off of this? Probably a Practitioner. Let's just open with Germain. And we'll boost him. Does we need to boost him? I think we're fine not boosting him, actually. I think of what he'd play.
we can force out all of his Yennefers, that's probably good. I think this also gives him, we give him a lot of statuses, right? For the Germain. Yeah, plus five on those. But we can invocation that or invocation one of his Trisses. Either's fine. And if he plays his Yennefer, or I meant Yennefer, not Triss. If he plays his Yennefer, we got a 50 50 to kill her with our own Yennefer. Other than that death blow, which now does not work then. Which is annoying. So go for another one. We can make one spawn here. But really, I think we just try and bleed out these guys. Or we just invocate. Yeah, I think we just try and bleed out his Yennefer's and invocation once we have two round three. That's probably our best choice. That's going to be our plan here. And I think we'll go a fawn. So we'll try and be pretty high tempo here. We'll go Musty Truffle with our leader charges in a fawn and then go into Triss. I think the Triss is if he gets more of these illusionists in a row, then we can actually zap them. When they go to two from half their base power, they'll all die because they took damage. So if he puts all those illusions, illusions into a row, that's actually pretty good for us. Well, having crossbows would be nice here too. Okay, I'm not sure. He's just trying to be, he's trying to play slow here. So, we'll go Mushy Truffle, go Illusionist, and we want to spawn one of these guys. Actually, we're going to boost this guy up. So it's not the lowest unit. And like I said, we're going to get our Afan out of our deck here too. Or we could wait on the Afan charge. Afan, Meteor Shower next turn. Let's wait for next turn to see if we want to do that. He does have at least two more um, Yennefer Illusionists in his hand. There's another one. He is playing them in different rows, which is smart. It is smart. Uh, I do want to take one of these. We do want to watch out for a Contarella, but I don't think these decks run that. But I think we're actually pretty safe and just taking this Illusionist. The question is, do we want to go Afan first with Meteor Shower? I think we do. So let's do that. Go here. Get our Afan. We go Meteor Shower range. We'll hit this row. Should be pretty good. It does look pretty good, doesn't it? Next turn we go Invocation and maybe Mushy Truffle. Depends if he gets ahead on even or not. There's the last one, so that's really good. Okay, so now we just take one of these. And the last card is still turning Joust, so we'll end our turn here. And we'll pass next turn, go into round three with double Yennefer Illusionist. Should be pretty good. Alright, so we got double Yennefer Illusionist for next round. We got Mushy Truffle carryover. He's used up all three of his Yennefer Illusionists, so this should be good for us. These guys, on the other hand, are not. Um, of the two, this could work well with one Illusionist, but if he kills it, we're in trouble. But the Illusionist could spawn a. Uh, slave infantry, which we could use. That's probably the best card in our deck, because we could risk drawing a mage assassin. We'll go here with Yennefer Illusionist. Zap away. Uh, we could boost here. So we know he runs turny joust. But I think we'll wait a turn. We'll be low greedy. We lose two points if he kills it. Or we lose two points on the um, Mushy Truffle. 
So we're gonna Illusionist Slave Infantry, then play Vrigif. Should be good. Uh, we actually get the bonded effect now, so maybe we won't go for the slave infantry. Uh, that's actually incredible for us. Oh my goodness. Hold on a second here. Um, we're going to go with another illusionist. Well, that was an incredible thing there from Luga Forts. I, want, I don't want him to kill... Like, we could have put these all in a row. But I don't want to give him any sort of chance of winning here. So this should be a GG for sure. Um, we don't have a Yennefer for Illusionist left, but that's fine. Because the amount of points we're going to get off this Vrigif is actually kind of crazy. We're at 24 now. There's no way he's going to win this. We're going to blow him out. Normally we'd just pass here if we're ahead so much, but I think it, no, he's not going to let us. Oh, what was it? We had 6 points here. Vrigif gives us an additional 16. He's 20. 26 points on our next turn. We're going to win by like 40. Up against Onslaught. Sir Albatross. I've definitely played this guy before. Not recently, but I remember this name. Hello again, Sir Albatross. Uh, what do we have here in our hand? Don't want you. Don't want you. Uh, we have a lot of our soldier stuff in hand here. I don't want two Nilf Guardian Knights, though. We are going first, so we have a pretty easy just Nilf Guardian Knight into blah blah blah. Oh, by the way, the reason we're running, um, we could run the Lamp Jin here. But, Tactile Advantage is nice if you play Yennefer round one. So it's Crystal Skull. It's also nice on the, um, Germain. It probably should be Lamp Jin, though. He did give us bleeding, which is annoying. Since it's onslaught, we're just gonna dead man's tongue, and I think what we're gonna do is just get rid of one of our megascopes, maybe both megascopes. The megascopes are really good round one because we know we're going first. We can put them on Nilf Guardian Knights, but I think at this point we just don't want them. Let's get rid of those. I'm not afraid of going too tall here. Like he's gonna have a harder terror. He plays that now. It's much better than playing it later. And we kind of want we want to stop him from getting any armor on anything, right? That's so kind of what we're scared of here. Although he's going to get an armor when we play something when he's got long ship out, which is annoying. Let's go Diplomacy. What do we have here? Damage allied by two. This armor could be very valuable. Let's play this. We'll actually boost this guy up. Giving armor to stuff is going to be really handy. Our kind of our issue we're coming up to though is we don't have a great next play. If we don't have good plays after this, we do want to win this round, but it's going to be very difficult. So we don't haven't killed anything yet. I, well, we could win the round, it's just going to be very inefficient to do so. Because these are going to... We're going to lose value on Slave Infantries and this. Like, we have a good... A very good hand. But I don't think it plays well right now, so we'll pass. I don't mind passing too much here. We haven't gotten him much armor yet. So he doesn't have, like, carryover from getting armor on stuff. We only played Bronzes. We thinned our deck. Well, we played, um... Dead Man's Tongue. Uh, he's got to play our card. Oh, he doesn't. Yeah, we're bleeding. Forgot about that. Yeah, he is. He's good. He's good. <laughs> so, the thing is, like, we have most of our combos left, so if he pushes round two, we can go with our combo stuff. Maybe save the Yennefers. He doesn't have armor, really, on anything, which is good for us. Let's kind of see here. We don't want you. Diplomacy is not the best card. Okay, we basically have the entire Slave Infantry combo, except for Jermaine. And that's kind of annoying, as Jermaine's like the key card here. But if he damages our units, we can transform them for good value still. So that's probably what'll end up happening. We can also get a long ship off of Illusionists, which I think we'll try and do if he does anything. Okay, so he is gonna do this. Let's go Mushy Truffle. 
Illusionist. No surprise to anybody here. We'll get one of these. Uh, we want to boost that out of three damage range. Actually, we're going to double boost this. If we boost it once, he's going to have the second Demon Light Longship for the one damage and leader charge it. I want it to be actually a threat to him this round. Like, kind of convince him he doesn't want to play the round, more or less. Now we can go to another Illusionist coming up, which is really good. And then if we need to, we can actually regrift these Illusionists. We don't want to commit too much. He might kill that to deny the bonded, which is smart. I th think the question is to how much do we commit to the soldiers here or the um, illusionists? I think we want to make another one. So let's do that. Let's make an illusionist. And we will, we could lead her to get this to four, but if we lead her, let's just let him kill it. If we lead her, he does lead her plus this and it kills it. If we lead her and formation it, we don't have that tempo later on. And if we lose the muscle truffle, we don't get to carry over. So I'd rather just, yeah, see, we knew he had that. Rather just have the carry over here. All right, so now we go for another illusionist. And just see if we can win the round with these guys. Okay. So four. Do we actually want to boost anything here? I think we're good. Hopefully next turn we can get a free gift off. Maybe we should have used the Mushy Truffle then to try and protect one of the Illusionists. Maybe. But then we don't have the option of it on Slave Infantry. Maybe we're banking too much on slave infantries. I think we could just invocation this uh, croc. That's probably the right choice. I didn't want to until we saw how much he's committing this round. But if he's going to keep doing it, we're going to get rid of it. We could have done that earlier. But I kind of thought he was just setting up armor in his hand for round three. and was going to pass. But apparently it's not the case. I really do want to draw Germain with these four cards in hand. Okay, he's actually going to go pretty hard here. So we could go Illusionist. Uh, Illusionist, I think, is the best choice here. I think we just go Illusionist. Be to and then I go with you. Formation into a Fawn. We lose our big tempo boost later on. But this should really be a problem for him. And it gives us a nice follow-up into Triss Meteor Shower if we need that point swing. Luna should be a huge threat to him. The thing is we can't actually make good on the threat. We're more or less using that as a tempo play here. But it, he doesn't know that, so we'll take that. And as long as we draw Jermaine, we should have a very, very strong round three. The only thing that could be concerning is when he plays um, Fakusha. The rain will get rid of some of our cows, which is annoying, but we should be able to transform enough. That's not a card I want to see, though. Get rid of this. Double Blightmaker, really nice. Um, potentially a substitute for Jermaine. We have a lot of good draws. We also have this draw and this draw, though. The card we're putting back is Croc. Put that croc. He only plays for seven plus one point a turn for us, which isn't great. So we're gonna just start pretty early here, I think, with this diplomacy. Okay, these are all bad. Let's go with one of these guys, I guess. Looking for one of the ships or something. It looks us have armor, so it's not the worst thing. Okay, now we go blight makers. You know, Blightmaker, Slave Infantry. Well, the question is, we play both Blightmakers first or not? I think we do. Go 
question is how much do we want to fill up this row we need room for two units because we have to play slave infantry with with um Rigriff in between so we need three spaces on the row this could fill the row up so we're gonna play it ranged I Now we start going to slave infantries. And then we'll use Meteor Shower to boost up all those guys. Should be pretty good. Should be pretty good. I expect a lot of points here. The question is how much control he has. He's used already the um, Terror of the Seas. So he shouldn't have too much damage. Well, he has some good cards left, right? Obviously, he's going to have uh, uh, Skiordal. Probably kill one of our slave infantries with that. That's his Fakusha somewhere. Not sure what he's going to use it on. Okay, no Skiordal then. That's nice. Probably drawing Fakusha, if we're honest here. It's Heart of Terror probably as well. Let's go into slave infantries. He's probably going to try and kill these off. We should get at least three for our Vrigriff and uh, Vreemd. Well, for Vreemd after we get our Vrigriff deploy. There's the Fakusha. Okay, just the ship. That's not bad. I think then we just go for the Vrigriff now. Will we still have these two guys? Because we have really good targets here, and this one's a one-point guy. And we can transform this one as well. That's really nice. And then I think we... Mushy Truffle boost. We can... Let's just boost this row. Then we can put this melee and then use this order. He's gonna kill off our Vreemd. Okay, good. Good. Uh, we can deploy you here, get some armor, transform this. Then we can go into Vreemd for a bunch of points and Meteor Shower. And we should get a lot of points here. I'm curious to see what his last cards are. But we're going to have a lot of tempo. Which is exactly how this deck is supposed to work. Okay, he banished one of the range draw ones. Fine. We'll go Vreemd. And this will be a lot of points from 34 to 48. So 14. Minus one. Because he the um, long ships ping us before we get our deploy armor. But he shouldn't have enough points here. There's the Heart of Terror we mentioned him having do three damage and meteor shower we're just going to play because and we should get a bunch of points here this is just kind of show off how much we actually do here we didn't actually need that obviously but now we're up by 22 gg imprisonment let's see what we've got here okay we do the megascope we want a uh left guardian knight then Okay. We have to be really careful with the Yennefers against other Nilfgaard players, which makes it really annoying. I want to use her. Part of the reason she's in here is a round one strategy to use her. But if we keep running into these people, we can't actually do that. By these people, I mean other Nilfgaard players. Is that annoying or is that not annoying? I haven't decided yet. It's annoying because if we play Nilfgaard and Knight, we get kind of wrecked. Well, maybe we make a lock or a damage card. We did neither. We actually made a Nilfgaardian Knight, funnily enough. Uh, Crossman goes well with our deck. If we damage, he's going to steal it. Let's just make the Nilfgaardian Knight. It's not the worst swap because we do boost him up, so he's a 6. It's not the worst thing. He's going to take our Knight, though. It does mean we get another one out later, though. It's not terrible. Okay, honestly, I, I'm just going to boost... We're just going to boost this guy again. Make his swap bad. As if the swap on this doesn't get used, it's a four-point card. So that's really nice. And we actually can illusionist the um, Master of Puppets quite effectively. That'll be fun. So that's nice. We will go Mega Scope. I'm not desperate to win on even here. If I was, we could Leader Charge or something, but I don't really care that much. 
do have Blightmaker coming up too. I want to wait to play Blightmaker just so if we don't ping down the Master Puppets. But at this point, it doesn't matter too much. No I'll remain unseen. So we'll just do it here. Now we do want to play everything in one row just in case we end up playing Meteor Shower. Zap that away. If we get low enough, like we're getting to the point where the tempo is low enough, we could go for a uh, butterflies. I feel like zapping our units, doesn't he? But like I said, we don't need to win on even. So I'm fine here just going with Triss Butterflies. Let's draw a unit. Uh, we want our own Yennefer Illusionist. Oh my goodness, I shuffled her in. I meant to pick her. Let's take her back. She's boosted by three now. Let's just pretend that was the intent. You heard me here. That was the intent. We wanted to boost her by three. Okay, so he's going to pass. That's fine. Now, uh, we have a good option for invocation here, potentially on a strong card. Uh, we could invocation... Brothens, we don't have something for. Otherwise, I'd say him. Take like Kelvy. That's not bad. We could also just play an illusionist. Although, that one makes our Ramon weaker. I think what we'll do is we'll just, I think we'll just invocation something. We could invocation Calvi to set up our round three. Kind of like that. Let's just do it. Take that. And then we could pressure here, potentially with slave infantries and stuff. And depending on how we draw, right? If we draw a mushy truffle or something, this would be really good. Because we can make those master of a, those puppet, puppet guys, whatever they're called. Um, we can open with you. That's not terrible. But, okay, that that's looking really good. Depends on how much damage he has. This is looking like a really strong hand to push with. So we're going to try it. Mr. Guy, whose name I always pronounce wrong because I don't know how to say it, it's in our hand. Yeah, we can make this master of puppets. That That's really good. Let's do that. We can go Ramon into Illusionist, get him some armor too, and then we'll make one of these guys. And that should make it difficult for him to decide what his next play will be. But it's one power, one power Master of Puppets, pretty annoying to play into. He's going to have to kill him. So we're going to maybe make a bunch of Master of Puppets. Maybe that might be our plan. That'd be fun. You guys play big bronzes, we can just start stealing them. Vrigif will give us more guys. Okay, so it's a ball deck. Uh, a taste of it's a ball deck. Uh, yeah, I really want to steal that card, so we're going to. Um, the thing here is we could Yennefer, but he does have this imprisonment, so we kind of want to save her for a round three card, even though she has really good synergies now. We're going to seize this. And then we will go with a second illusionist and make another master puppets. That's annoying. It's not too big a deal. We're just going to do this for tempo here. We do have Meteor Shower in hand, so we could go for a Fawn Meteor Shower. Like, a little triple leader charge a Fawn Meteor Shower. We could do it. Oh, we have to wait till he seizes something with his Master Puppets, though. Well, once he seizes back the um, Thirsty Dame. There's Joachim. What do you get with Joachim here? Okay, that's expected. Okay, so we didn't seize back. That makes Meteor Shower worse. If we fill our melee row up, he can seize without moving, and he'll just take a card every turn, which is annoying. So we don't want to get this row completely full. I'm just thinking if we go Triple Leader, Afon, 
Vaughn gets the last card. Let's go for it. We want this tempo play here, I think. So we're just going to boost non-bronze cards. We can't take the points away from us. Get our Fawn. And then we'll go Meteor Shower for a bunch of tempo and just let him try and win. Oh, uh, it's range we want, right? Yeah. So we're at 47. This isn't the biggest Meteor Shower ever, but it's a 20 point play. And then we're just going to pass and like make him waste and like go down cards, I think is our idea here. We can still play um, this guy if you want to set up for Jermaine going to the next round. We draw Jermaine, Mushy Truffle, um, Dead Man's Tongue, then Blightmaker, and then probably Slave Infantries. So it might be worth it to get those Slave Infantry draws, potentially. Question is, we don't want to get too far behind on tempo by doing that. Poison. I think we'll do it. We just have to make sure we play him ranged. We can't start stealing stuff every turn. If he's smart, he'll start cycling this one power guy infinitely. That's what he should do. Well, I guess maybe not. We'll set our deck up. Um, he's a soldier, get extra armor here. I, I doubt he has 34 points in one turn, although it is possible. Okay, this might get him close to 34 points. We'll see just how much this poison is worth. <laughs> Need 17 more. Okay, so we'll pass here. We've bled out the ball, and we should have a really good round three hand. We're going to get Mushy Truffle, which is really good. Jermaine, which is good. One of... This and this, and then we get one, hopefully one slave infantry. Like we could have kept pushing here with Reamed because he's not gonna be great next round. But the thing by is if we do that, then he's gonna start getting a ton of points, right? And that's not amazing. Like we're already at the point where if he like did something, we wouldn't be ahead. Like he'd get get ahead of card. We should have bled out most of his big stuff, right? Ball's gone. We do have Illusionist into the um, one power guy again, which is really nice. Like I said, we don't want you. We draw this. Do we want a Slave Infantry? I mean, this... With Jermaine, we do want one. The question is, would we get it if we mulligan? There's two of it and one Nilfgaard Knight. Nilfgaard Knight's really bad. Um, this all spawns... Dead Man's Tongue Banish. We can Dead Man's Tongue... We'll just keep this hand, I think. He has the control from Illusionist here. Which is annoying, but I think most of his good cards are used up. The other thing is, Mushy Truffle's um, plus three, or the uh, Golden Froth on the three units, we can put them all on the Germain's Cows, so he can spawn us enough stuff to make that work if he starts controlling our units. So this is actually pretty valuable to have Jermaine here. There's no way this Yennefer goes off, so we're just going to save her for last play so we can't ping down the illusion. Now he has to kill this Master of Puppets or else we're taking an 8 point card. There's no reason to try and protect this because he always has an imprisonment charge, but he has to kill it now. It might mean an inefficient leader charge or something. Then he might use one on Jermaine. Who knows? Let's see what he gets here. Probably his own illusionist or something. We don't have a ping card. Is he going to get his own illusionist? We're going to have one of these fun games here. That's interesting. So he's going to have to leader this. Okay. Yeah, he has to leader that. So, in that case... Playmaker is good because it could kill his card there. Let's do this. Mage Assassin. Hopefully we kill this. It's not a high chance, but... Okay, it's fine. It's a good tempo play still. Let's 
He has invocation, right? So we want to split up our points. Let's do our Jermaine. And we're going to boost with Mushy Truffle this turn or next turn. Let's keep waiting. He's going to have... Maybe he'll lock this. It won't help, though, because our Yennefer... We don't have our synergy with Yennefer. There shouldn't be too many points. Oh, he has the Bonded, though. It's going to be quite a bit because he can get them 8 points from Nilfgaard Knight. That might kind of put him ahead here. Yeah, he's got the bonded. Uh, we could Yennefer. And then save this for last, say. Yennefer is not amazing. We're down so much all of a sudden. Man. Spawning extra illusionists is kind of ridiculous, isn't it? Uh, let's do this. He has invocation, but it's smaller for him to take this than it is what we dead man's tongue. Oh, he has coup. That's right. We knew he had a coup. Just like also have Yennefer. We need 18. I don't think we have 18, but Dead Man's Tongue it is. Um, 5 and 5 is 10. I think we have 16. So we'll boost here. Close game. It, it, he spawned too many extra illusionists. Onslaught. Should be interesting. Do have Mega Scope, Yennefer. Are we going? We're going second. That's interesting. Second's interesting. It's gonna be hard to deny him armor, but maybe we can get a bunch of tempo. Let's we'll see here. Strong one might be kind of hard. I think he's gonna get like a long ship or two going, and then we'll be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, look at the first one. We could make something with armor with diplomacy. Or we go Lufgari Knight into Megascope. He might if he has a, if he plays Junot on this, we're in a lot, a lot of trouble, but it's also a big commitment from him, so I'm not sure he would. Okay, so we're just going to go here. Megascope. We'd like the Dead Man's Tongue, too. Or the other Megascope now. Potentially the other Nilfgaardian Knight. They're really in here just for round one tempo. Our issue is here is our issue here is he's gonna be able to do whatever he wants. Because we can't win this round one, especially if he has a coral or something in his hand. Well, if he didn't have coral now he does, if that's what he's running. Although maybe in the newer decks you don't actually you probably run coral in the discard package. I don't see why you wouldn't. So he probably has that, which is annoying. Very annoying. I think we diplomacy now. Uh this is so we don't have bloodthirst on anything, right? Nah. But this could be useful. It's a really low tempo play, but we can get this guy out of the melee row at least. It's only a four point play, but it does stop that guy from pinging us, which is really handy. Stop giving him armor. Also gives us something to slave infantry if we want. To uh, it, I pinged it by three. It's not really a ping at that point, is it? So there's Croc. We don't have Invocation, which is a problem. Since we don't have the invocation, we really want to win this round then. Although that's going to be very difficult. I'm not sure we can either. So... 
Not great. Uh, we do have our Triss Meteor Shower, though, as a tempo play. So I think what we'll do is we'll, like, go Slave Infantry, transform this before it gets pinged away, make it harder for him, and then we'll go Lightmaker this, and maybe that'll be good enough? We'll see. We'll transform this guy. He actually needs pretty high armor on his units now. It's going to be like the ship, right? The range ship. Not next to Croc. That's weird. Feels like he kind of just didn't think that one through all the way. Let's go into Blightmaker. Okay, hitting armor is expected there. But we have a pretty good Triss Meteor Shower set up now. I think we might go for it. It might get us a win on even, which would be amazing. Yeah, there's the ship I thought he was going to play earlier. Meteor Shower is what? 2, 4, 7, 11, 14, 18, 22 points. 21 points, which is a 3. That's really good, actually. If we have Fawn first, we get another three points, but that loses our Fawn up. Definitely think this is a good idea. 21. 48. Yeah, it's 28 points. Must have counted wrong somewhere. That's really nice, though. And to be... He could damage our he could make our units become damaged again though. Which is a little annoying, but it's fine. We got a big tempo play, and we still have our Dead Man's Tongue Death in our deck out. Can play for nine points too. I, I thought we wouldn't be able to win this round, but uh looks like we might have a chance of it here. Heart of Terror is kinda scary because we have a bunch of boosted units, but remember these are all pretty high base power. So he's gonna get like a ten point heart of terror at most. Until we dead man's tongue, which is... Okay, Chunod is my guess here to try and catch up on tempo. Which isn't bad. If he's using that up, that's good for us. Okay, he is. It's nice. Gets ahead here. That's fine. Uh, we dead man's tongue then. And we're going to get rid of Nilf Guardian Knight and Megascope. Their purpose is, like like I said, their purpose is mostly this round one. This is giving him a good more far part of terror though. Question is, how many of his good cards is he willing to commit this round? We haven't killed a bronze, by the way, so. Oh, he discarded a squirrel. We could make a one point squirrel. We do get the win on even. Okay, that's really good. Really good. We, use up a, we did use up a slave infantry, but with illusionists, maybe we can do something here. Round two. We definitely. Oh, there's Jermaine. So slave infantries or stuff to make. We want. Okay, double, triple illusion as a free gift. Uh, Jermaine. Uh, he's still a good tempo play, so I think we'll hold on to him. We could draw a fawn, which would be bad, so we'll just go with this hand. And this actually looks really good for pushing. Go mushy truffle. If he answers this, we get the carryover. Get ourselves one of these guys. And he should... He's going to be in a little bit of trouble here. Which is what we want to see. We can either kill this to deny us bonded, in which case we can use the Golden Froth on this one. There's the uh, Coral. Hopefully it misses our guy. That's not bad. Does he Leader Charge? I don't want the Leader Charge. Okay, he didn't. Good. So then we'll go into Illusionist here. We'll make another boat. And I think what we'll do here is boost some of these guys up. And we're just going to pull out our Afan and try and do a 2-0. If we don't, don't do a 2-0, the uh, Afan being out of our, thinned out of our deck's nice too, though. Okay. Uh, do we want to go into the Mushy Shuffle Order? No, I don't think we're that desperate. Like it, he, This does open up possibly for Leader plus Coral damage to kill off one of our um, 
illusionist, but I think he'd be more focused on the longships. It's going to be depending on if he has like a burden on his hand or something, if he does where the damage goes. So he has the Fakusha. That's fine. Uh, we can just make two more longships and call it a day. We could also go into Yennefer. She'll be a five. He's got one ping here. It's not the lowest. We could go Yennefer. And then use this and this to combo with her power. If we play her melee, we can also... We'll lose out on space, which is the problem from Vrigif. If we boost her with this. But... This is on her row, right? Yeah, we have to play her ranged. Okay, let's do it. He's at five. Let's see what he wants to do. Obviously, he can ping away the illusion. We'll do this here. He's gonna. It might force out the um, the terror of the seas, which is what we want. That's a big finisher whose points are being used on a Yennefer. That's good. If he can't answer Yennefer, the game's over. So we'll kind of see if he can or can't. This is risky because we're also losing out potentially two more damage from extra long ships and giving him time to kill illusionists. Okay, yeah, we forced it out. Perfect. And it's gonna ping this, right? So one damage kills it. Yeah. Okay, good. We got Terror of the Seas gone. That's one of his finishers. I have no problem just doing this here. We put him behind between soldiers, though, not behind between the long ships. We do this, and let's go for two more of these guys. And do we use? No, let's hold off. Much shuffle again. That's a lot of long ships. This deck's built around slave infantry, so we can work with the uh, illusionists too, just fine. You know, it has got four armor on that, and now it has zero, so it's kind of amusing to me. Okay, we're definitely playing this last one too. Here, play this guy. The extra point. Okay, he still has a lot of potential damage. But here's the thing. Like, he's down 15. Terror of the Seas is the big finisher, usually. Heart of Terror is usually a finisher, too, right? But that's not going to do much here. We could just Germain and go for the 2-0. Not sure why I didn't put that by Croc. He might be getting thrown off here. I think he might be throwing him off. So what do we have? We have 16. Or, um, not 16. We have 15. Yeah, we're going to go for it. Do this. Do this. The only way we lose this is if he has, like, um, the boat that does damage to everything. But we tried to get some units out of the damage range there. And we're up by 21. So it should be rough for him. And the other thing is, if he does have the um, Wild Boar of the State, we have a bunch of armor on some of our units, at least. So... Like, I kind of think this is a harder terror that's going to play for seven, but we're going to find out. Well, plus Croc's ability if he's got armor. Like I said, harder terror. And that's a GG. So that's the deck, guys. What do I think? I think it's a lot of fun. I always enjoy these Germain Slave Infantry decks. The, the combo between Germain Slave Infantry, Vreemd... And free gifts always been really fun to me. I just thought it was cool. We turn the cows into soldiers. It's like we take, we enslave the cows. We make them ride into battle as people, I guess. It, it, you know, it, thematically, it's really weird that slave infantry transforms any unit, not just like a human or something. This is no complaint about the card. I just think it's hilarious that we can make these little cows. We just. I guess we just give the cows swords, they run into battle and kill people. I don't know. I, I think it's hilarious. That's part of the reason I love this combo so much. But yeah, the Jersey Remain plus Slave Infantries is really good. You get nine points off each Slave Infantry. Free Gifts, it spawns them again and gets you four more points off each of them. And then you have Ramon making them. And then you just go Vreemd. And it used to be the big finishers, you go Vreemd. Now you can do the Vreemd and the Triss Meteor Shower. 
It's a lot of points. It's a lot of fun. Really like it. I do enjoy this version of Soldiers. The only th and then you have the backup, which is an Illusionist. It's a very good play. Again, for Illusionist, really good. And spawning stuff, we have ways to spawn stuff. The Megascopes and Nilfgaardian Knights were okay. Um, we ended up not using Hanna for Illusionist too much as a core card for engine value. But you can, right? It's, it's not bad. It, it's a lot of fun. I do like the deck. And I don't know how I overlooked Illusionist when I mentioned the deck in the beginning of this video. I think I said there's no backup to the Slate Entry. We have Illusionists. can't believe I didn't said that. <laughs> I forgot about it. It's probably scrolled, down, scrolled at the, off the bottom or something. But Illusionist is just as nuts as always. Such a strong card. Man. So good. But yeah, th this is the deck. The Megascope and Nilf Guardian Knights are swappable, as you saw in the games. Whenever we didn't have them round one, I tried to um, Dead Man's Tongue them. Really glad we have a Dead Man's Tongue in the deck. I think it's nice to have that thinning, obviously. But it's also really nice to be able to banish these Megascopes after round one. Or if they don't line up with Nilf Guardian Knight. I do like doing that. A Diplomacy, you could swap for four person Shoulder very easily. It's just in here because I had it as a, it synergizes with an illusionist, but uh, it probably is worth cutting. Um, we don't really, the only time this would be really be good is if you go round one, you go illusionist, and then you just use it for illusionist round one with engine value, which we could do. And then ensure our long round three with a soldier stuff. That's not a bad strategy, actually. Uh, I wouldn't mind doing that at all. Sounds pretty good. Um, but then you'd probably want to put in Crystal Skull. Crystal Skull would make... You could play Yennefer Lucian's Crystal Skull here. That'd be really good. Actually, we might make that change in our Lamp Gin. I, I think Tactical Advantage was just... I made this deck new and didn't swap it out. So we're going to Magic Lamp real quick here, guys. Don't don't worry about that. It synergizes with Triss and everything, so let's do that. But yeah, that's the deck. I do quite like it. Uh, there's definitely a version without the slave infantry stuff, but I do like this one. I think I would, um, I think I would take out Nilf Guardian Knight and Megascope though. So what would we swap in for them? I think we would like to do. We do need that round one tempo. But the other thing I think I think is really nice is I really like Alba Armored Cavalry in these soldier decks. He doesn't have the best synergy, but even just one because you can make a second with Ramon if you need it. I, I do think we'd put an Alba Armored Cavalry off the Renulf Guardian Knights and take out Megascopes. Instead of Megascopes, we need our 4 Persian card, preferably a Soldier. It could also be the Van Morlehem Hunter for the damage. Uh, Alba Spearman isn't great still, sadly. would like to see something there. But you could also put in a Squirrel or a Spores, something like that as a tech card. So, I'm not too sure which one I prefer. I might go for the tech card route. I might go Tourney Jousts. Um, we don't have much targeted damage. So I actually think Turning Joust might be the answer here. Ointment's kind of funny. You, you can use it. It's just weird. You could also go with the um, Ardfang Tortoise. Whatever you want for these. But I think Megascope and Lilfgaard Knight I will take will take out. And that leaves us with one more thing I want to mention about the deck. Which is, I do wish we had another card up here. So either a Heat Wave or a Vigo's Muzzle type card to take advantage here. So that's worth mentioning I'm not sure we'd remove for it. You'd probably have to take out Germain, but you could make a deck without him. I I just think it's funny, man. It's it's funny, but you could take him out. But I, I really think if you're running the Slave Infantry version, you want to do that. If you don't want Slave Infantry, or if you want an alternative swap for Nilfgaard Knight, you could just go pretty standard. Go with the Crossbowmen, Ardfan Crossbows, wherever they are. You could put them in. They're they're a five percent card. I promise. Oh, right here. Yeah, these guys. And you could also go, if you want to take out the Slave Entry stuff, you could go with Alba Pikeman as well. Just go full engine value. But up to you. I really like this deck. Let me know what you guys think. Did you think it was fun to watch? Have you tried out any stuff with us? And glad to be back and having fun with these videos again. That'll be it for this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed. We'll see you next time. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more. And you can check out some more videos over here. Thanks for watching.